This is Tommy with Triple H Terminating Company. Uh, out here in Dunn, North Carolina today. Very, very cold today for some reason, uh, but we're still at it. Uh, we're doing a real estate inspection or a termite inspection for a real estate transaction over here on a house built in the 90s. Um, now, the thing about houses that were built around that time period are, in 1983, the EPA banned the use of chloridane. Chloridane was like a magical thermocide that worked really, really great. You would uh, treat a house with that while it was being built and almost never have to worry about thermites. It was really, really good stuff. But the years after that, I'd say for the more than a decade after that, uh, we had a hard time finding good chemicals that could that could compare, um, that, that could be work as good as chloridane. And so a house in the 90s was kind of a victim of that. Um, it could have been treated with something like Clo uh, with Dragnet or Durasban, but the pickings were slim on, on what would work good. So you gotta take these houses into consideration. You gotta think about what, what they were treated with, what kind of issues you might run into. But I'm gonna give you a couple tips on what you need to consider when you're inspecting a house from the 90s for termites here in North Carolina. Okay, first of all, one of the things you really got to look at is the uh, way it's built. It's got a brick on the outside. Now, a lot of people will look at brick and say, well, that's great. You know, I, I'm not going to get termites because I have a brick house. Uh, that's not true at all. The, the brick is just siding. That's all it is. Uh, the brick does not support a house. It just It's, it's just siding. Uh, the house is still supported like every other house. As a matter of fact, it's got a totally separate foundation usually inside of here. And very often with these, especially during this time period, there'll be the brick on the outside, but then inside there will be a, a center block foundation, like a hollow block foundation is what we call it. And uh, the problem with those is there's a big gap in between the brick and the, and the hollow block. And uh, that's kind of a big concern for us because termites can go right up there anywhere in this house where that's going on. It's very, very easy for termites to, to, to go right up there and we can never see them. And so you got to do a much more thorough inspection on one like this. Um, another thing, just while I'm sitting here, this house has tip vents. Tip vents were a really big thing uh, a couple decades ago that a lot of termite guys sold. We never really got into selling these a lot. We did a few, but... Um, this was a terrible idea for my area anyway. Now they might be great in some parts of the country because how these things work is when it gets cold, they close up. I see today it's cold and so the vents closed. Whenever it gets warm, they'll open up. And the idea was that a warm day would allow air to go through. Um, and that seems like a good idea, but it's, it's a terrible idea, especially here in North Carolina. Um, it's actually the opposite of what you want. Like right now in the winter time when it's, when it's cold outside, the air is much drier. And so right now, all the crawl spaces are actually pretty dry. The big problem down here is in the, in the spring and summer, the air is heavy and damp and wet. And that, that moist air gets in the crawl spaces and it gets trapped under there. So you would actually be better off if you did the opposite, if you had them closed in the summertime and open in the winter when it comes to our area. Now, that might not be the same everywhere. These vents might be great in some parts of the country, but I think in the southeast, these vents are terrible. You should not buy these. You do not want these. Um, I do not think that we ever should have ever been selling these. To me, I look how they're, and they're always installed kind of poorly. I see how it's not even really secure. You know, these things, they fall off all the time. And uh, I mean, of course, that's not, that's not the company's fault. This is just, you know, poor uh, people not doing a good job installing them. So you look right here, see? I see that every time there's one that they're, they're falling out far away from the house. So if you live in my in my neck of the woods in North Carolina, I would suggest do not do not buy these. Do not have these installed in your house. Um, now if they're already in your house and you don't have any problems, then you know don't panic, don't worry about it, it's no big deal. Um, but don't don't install new ones, they're terrible. Um, now here is the area we're definitely gonna worry about, look more into. So you got a nice front porch here. It's a brick front porch. And one big issue is there's no, there's nothing over top of it. So when rain comes down, it hits this front porch, bounces up against this door. And so you get signs like, um, like here, you can tell this wood's been wet before, they've got it sealed up. But you can tell water could easily get into these places, around here, and see like uh, where this porch is. You got cracks right there. Um, the brick is very porous material, so it absorbs water. And so porches like this always just, I think these kind of porches are a bad idea. If you've got a brick porch like this, you want to cover over it to make sure rain just isn't constantly pouring on it. 
because I mean you can tell the the difference in the color of the mortar. I mean it's um this this porch here absorbs water, and um, yeah I can see there's some visible cracks right along here. So I bet you when we get into the crawl space. Um, I bet you we end up finding some moisture's gotten back here. This is probably another, a really good area for termites too. On this whole house, this is probably where the termites will be. Um, hopefully, we don't find any, but this is my experience. It's usually where we're going to end up. There'll be some. There'll be some kind of problem under this porch. I can almost guarantee it. You see where they did like a little bit of caulking or something, and uh, yeah, see that right there, trying to fix that. This is. They're going to be getting moisture up underneath here. So that's kind of the main thing. The way these houses from the 90s are built, one, you gotta worry about the termite side that was used. Uh, probably durs made or dragnet, that stuff broke down easily. And we had a hard time controlling termites back then. Back then when we would do our, our treatments throughout a year, during swarm season, it seemed like half the calls we would get would be complaints or termites were still at houses that we had treated. And um, that stuff just did not work good. Durs band was terrible, dragnet was terrible. And uh, so, but be careful if you see a house that was built uh, say from 1985 on up to about maybe uh, 2000. Those are the houses that you really have to be worried about. Uh, see if you can see any evidence of the house being treated. This house here does not look like it's ever been treated. So, you know, now sometimes we get lucky. Maybe it won't have termites, and that'll be great. But whenever you see a house in that time period and it has not been treated, you know, you should have your radar up a little bit higher um, because it probably was not treated with terminal or anything good. So. Um, really, really focus on that. And also, when I get into crawl space, I'll show you that gap if we're able to see it. And that's the other big concern about houses like this. Um, you gotta look a little bit more careful and uh, just be real cautious whenever you're checking these. And uh, you gotta spend probably another 20, uh, 15, 20 minutes at least under one of these houses as opposed to a normal house where you're just worried about the porches and decks and stuff. Um, so let's, uh, let's go into crawl space, see what else we got and see what we're gonna get into in there. All right, so we're in the crawl space now. And uh, so just kind of has a thought, on the inside of the crawl space, we've got block in here. So it's just a cinder block is the foundation. And you can see like the little holes where the vents are. And so the, one of the reasons why, you know, houses that are kind of built with this design are a bit dangerous is because of the areas that we cannot see. And a good example is, you know, you got the outsides got all brick. But then if you look right here, here's how they come together. So you've got the uh, the brick foundation wall, and then there's the um, there's the brick wall, and then there's the center block foundation wall. There's this big gap, and that gap runs all the way around this house. And so that's the big problem. In areas like that, we cannot see back behind there. And so when you're doing an inspection on a house like this, you have got to, you absolutely have got to, uh, all the way around, go and pull back the insulation you got to look back here and right here is behind the front the front porch area and uh and as a matter of fact we got some moisture going on here right here okay now you can see some uh bit of a moisture let's see if i can get a good angle on it see some moisture right there this is coming in from the front porch area um, so just kind of as I suspected with the brick front porch like that, there's all kinds of little areas because that it just seems to soak up water and uh, water can just make its way back behind there. We get, we get this kind of thing all the time with these brick front porches, especially when there's not a good cover on it. So in order to see if it's getting actively wet or not, we'll use a uh, moisture meter. And if you're not familiar with a moisture meter, we, uh, we use pro meters. These things work pretty good. It's um, that's a pro meter, and how they work basically is uh, the two metal prongs pass an electric current between each other, and uh, so wood by dry wood is not does not conduct electricity very well, but water conducts electricity very well, and so if the wood is wet, it'll give a stronger signal. If it's dry, it'll give a weaker signal. So that's basically how it's measured, and so when you see a spot like that, go up here and see. First, you want to check. A normal part of the floor joist so see this is kind of the baseline moisture to crawl space about 14 percent which is a good moisture level that's actually not bad at all for north carolina um 
but then you go up here where you just exposed it and see it goes red it goes into like 22 24 percent so that tells you that in this area water is actively making its way through there and uh so that's something that's going to be conducive to termites we want to let the buyers know about and uh it seems pretty solid right now but this is going to be this is going to rot if something is not done here to stop this this floor system here uh will rot and um yeah see so here's some more See, that's definitely, that's getting extremely wet. That's soaking wet. You can actually feel water on that. So, and that's behind that front porch with, uh, with the brick front porch. So those are the areas we really worry about, things like that. So this house here, you need to take a lot longer checking these because of the way the foundation is. You've got that big gap all the way around this entire structure. And uh, that is actually where termites are most likely to be also because it's protected from the sun it's uh it's gonna hold a little bit of moisture in that area a little bit better than the, than the rest of the house and so that's just a prime area for for termites to come up and it, it doesn't even have to be a crack in the um in the footer it could be and it, it could easily be a crack in the footer but it could be just any crack in the in the brick um and, and there, there's always cracks in that brick um and where the where it all joins together there are hundreds of different places those termites can get through there so that's going to be the main concern so when a house like this with this kind of foundation especially with a brick exterior, you really need to spend a lot more time under here. You need to pull back all the insulation all the way around the house. Um, this is this is kind of the exception to the rule when you really need to do that, especially one, this was built like the 90s. And um, so the, it seems like the gaps are a lot wider. The, the houses were not made quite as tight as they are now. So there's a lot more gaps and stuff. So you need to pay close attention to these and, and make sure you're pulling back all the insulation all the way around, not just where the porches are or the decks are.